Welcome to It Is Not Empty, where we explore the lesser known stories behind the science we have today. In this episode, we will be talking about Lies Meitner, the incredible Austrian physicist who helped uncover nuclear fission. Meitner's life was far from empty. She was driven by curiosity, but ultimately cursed by war and prejudice, a curse that has never left her to this day. Lise was born in Vienna, Austria in 1878. Her father was a wealthy Jewish lawyer and chess player, born Elise Meitner. She later shortened her name to just Lise. When she was young, she was taught to play piano. The story goes that she was scolded for playing the piano on Sunday. She was told God would punish her for doing so. Lise decided to test this theory. She snuck away to play piano each Sunday and waited to see what would happen. She concluded God did not punish her for playing on Sundays. Lise's father encouraged her scientific interests, despite the sciences not being taught to women at the time. If Lise wanted to study from a certain book, then her father would simply buy it for her. In time, however, her studies would have to continue at higher levels. In 1901, she would enter the University of Vienna, at least in part thanks to the resources of her father. Nonetheless, her studies were rigorous. At a time where women weren't trusted with the knowledge of science, she needed to prove herself. So just five years later, after finally entering a traditional university, Lise became the second woman to ever receive her PhD from the University of Vienna. Lise moved to Berlin in 1907. Berlin was a mecca of science. At the time, journalist Hugh Kriesholm said the city was, quote, the most complete application of science, order, and method of public life. Surely excited at the opportunities before her, she began work at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, but was not warmly welcomed. She was marginalized, as were the other women there, given little to nothing with which to perform her experiments. She, along with the other women scientists, were forced to work in a cellar. This all changed when she met Otto Hahn, a young chemist who asked Lise to be his assistant. They became fast friends, and Otto helped her find a greater acknowledgement at the Institute. Lise and Otto worked closely for many years. Without Otto, it is likely Lise would have never left the cellar of Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. Make no mistake, though, it was Lise's brilliance which kept her out of that cellar. She worked tirelessly in Berlin with the top scientists of the time. Einstein once called her Germany's Marie Curie. Sadly, just seven years after moving to Berlin, World War I broke out. Otto Hahn worked to help the Germans create poisonous gases to use in the trenches, while Lise worked as a nurse for soldiers returning from the front lines. The war ended, and Otto and Lise continued to work together. In 1934, experiments began, which would ultimately lead to Lise's brilliant discovery, a discovery that would change history. The scientist who began these experiments was a man by the name of Enrico Fermi. He would shoot neutrons at uranium. This would split the uranium into two equally sized pieces of lighter elements. This behavior was perplexing to Fermi, and it also stirred the minds of scientists at Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. Otto Hahn, as a chemist, worked on the chemical experiments, while Lise, with her expertise in physics, worked on explaining the physical processes at work in these experiments. All of this work was abruptly put on pause in 1938, a year that would prove to be both deeply sad and incredibly profound for Lise Meitner. With the annexation of Austria by Germany in 1938, Lise's work at Kaiser Wilhelm was put to an end. Lise, a Jewish woman, was not only being left out of scientific publications she had a hand in, but was being forced to flee Germany or risk her life. 
her influential colleagues at the Institute, many of whom she regarded as family, arranged to help her cross the border to Sweden without having her papers checked. Otto Hahn even provided her with his mother's diamond ring to bribe a guard. Thankfully, the bribing, using the ring at least, was not needed. Meitner took a position in Stockholm, having left all of her belongings behind in Germany, but she continued her work. Hahn was still left confused by the results of his experiments, so he continued his correspondence with Lies. And in this same year of her flight from Germany, Lies made her greatest discovery. The process which was leading to these experiment results was the process of nuclear fission. Not only did Meitner discover this, she uncovered the remarkable energy which emerged. It was a greater power than any reaction ever discovered. This power was enough to change history, a process so brilliant and horrific in its implications that it would define an era. Meitner uncovered a process which could build nations and destroy worlds. Sadly, for all the brilliance of her work, her legacy was not honored. In 1944, a scientist was awarded the Nobel Prize for the discovery of nuclear fission. That scientist was Otto Hahn. Meanwhile, Lies, who explained the processes at play, received nothing. For nearly 40 years after this discovery, she was given nearly no credit for her explanation of nuclear fission. Instead, that credit often went to Otto Hahn. Otto Hahn was a brilliant friend to Lies, and he did an incredible job with the chemical aspects of uncovering nuclear fission. But it was Lies who explained what was happening. Science writer and researcher Ruth Lewin Sein explained that this injustice likely had to do with, quote, the politics of Nazi Germany, the politics of race, which forced her out, the politics of oppression and fear, which kept her work from being recognized at the time, and finally the memory in the post-war period, which perpetuated the injustice to Lise Meitner as a scientist and distorted the history of this story for many years afterwards. The only thing Lise Meitner was given for her explanation of nuclear fission was a title. The Mother of the Atom Bomb. One can scarcely find a greater insult to her legacy. When Lise was asked to join the Manhattan Project to help build a bomb, she refused, exclaiming, I will have nothing to do with the bomb. Yet the name stuck. She died with that title. But on her gravestone, her nephew Otto Frisch inscribed the words, Lise Meitner, a physicist who never lost her humanity. <laughs>